Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. I apologise for not being on camera for this video. I'm not feeling 100% unfortunately when I woke up this morning, and given that I would also need to clear off on my desk and a few other bits, given that I was... Uh, rebuilding a PC yesterday because I am in the process of testing a couple of new motherboards, including a budget uh, X570 board, I just decided, well, audio only. With that all said, though, we have an awful lot of news to get through, so let's start things out with AMD, as there are a couple of pieces of news concerning the next generation cards from AMD. I'm going to start things out though by debunking a previous rumour that I did say that I was very sceptical about, and that concerns filings on the EEC from a few days ago from the company AFOX, I believe that's how you pronounce it anyway. Uh, AFOX actually provided a statement to Igor's lab, and the long and the short of it is that AFOX themselves did not submit cards such as the RX 5950 to the EEC. Indeed, it was one of their partners, one of their Russian partners that did this, and basically they did it as kind of a preemptive prediction of what they thought the cards were going to be called, rather than actual knowledge. So it's kind of a guess. Um, and AFOX have actually said that they're trying to get these entries removed, but it can take several weeks for the uh, changes to take effect. Honestly, this is not surprising to me, given one of my sources told me that the cards are most likely going to be uh, named the RX 6000 series, but we'll get more on to the release date and stuff in just a moment, because we actually have an update to that as well. But first of all, I'd like to discuss a thread, which is on Chip Hell, and the uh, poster here, by the name of Zhang Zhong Hao, believes that the internal validation of the cards is actually complete and they are outperforming the RTX 2080 Ti with hardware ray tracing. Uh, it's using the second generation of RDNA and they said that the news is reliable but I cannot say the source. There are new cards which will also launch after Narve 21. So once again, they state that there are 80 internal compute units. So the, fa the thing is, though, with the statement here, they're stating that they're comparing against the RTX 2080 Ti, but that doesn't actually tell us whether it's faster or slower than the RTX 2080 Ti, or by what margin. So in other words, you can compare it against an RTX 2080 Ti, and it could be slower, or it could be 30-40% faster. However, a stock RTX 2080 Ti was being outperformed by around 30%. I want to put a pin on the performance information for just a moment and discuss a tweet from Ycry over at videocards.com. We were told that Nvidia will launch a new GPU around the second quarter. AMD is also expected to have big Narve around Computex. This information is allegedly from their board partners. We have some Nvidia information, so I'll hold off on the Nvidia side of the equation for now, but this information concerning Big Narve at Computex also tells us up to what I've been told. One of my sources, you might recall, just prior to CES said, A, CES, we would not see anything to do with the next generation cards from AMD. Uh, for B, they would most likely be called the RX 6000 series, but the release date was about midpoint this year, potentially slipping into summer, although at the moment an exact date had not been nailed down. I have personally been told a couple of times now that we will see up to 80 compute units in the high-end RDNA cards, although the thing that I find quite interesting is all of the people I've spoken to claims it's Narve 23, which is the biggest GPU and not Narve 21, but to be honest with you, that doesn't really matter anyway, it's only the code name of the GPU itself. I'm much more interested in the specifications and the performance of the card relative to the pricing. I think AMD have done a fairly decent job at the moment with the mid to low range, uh, competing against Nvidia that is, and arguably they put enough pressure on Nvidia to of course uh, prompt the super response. But what we really want 
is competition for the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs. And rather than discuss things alphabetically as I normally would, I will get straight on to the NVIDIA stuff because, quite frankly, I think it's very pertinent to this discussion. So, as we all know, Turing has been pretty damn successful, but we are waiting for RTX 30. What we can almost certainly say is the GTC 2020, which is going to be starting uh, late March this year, of course, we will learn further details of NVIDIA's plans for the GPUs. I predict that probably we're going to get some type of reveal of a future architecture, or at the very least a roadmap. I personally predict we're probably going to learn some details about the architecture if we don't get full benchmarks. However, one thing that is still unclear even is the code name for the GPU. It's commonly referred to, of course, as Ampere, but realistically, NVIDIA themselves have not confirmed this. We have seen several filings for, let's say, GA102, but it has not been confirmed, and we've also heard rumours of Hopper, H-O-P-P-E-R, um, and one thing that could put the uh, stop on the name of Ampere is the fact that there is actually a company called Ampere Computing. And according to people who were talking to uh, Adore TV slash Jim, they believe that NVIDIA won't be using Ampere simply because of this reason. So going back to what Ycry mentioned regarding the release date for these GPUs, Ycry's information is typically pretty darn accurate. And he claims that sources are telling him that new GPUs will launch at some point in the second quarter. However, we may have specifications regarding these new cards. So we have two sources of this information. The first is a Twitter post from a user by the name of Kitty Corgi. And the second is a post from My Drivers. Now, the Twitter Corgi post was actually dating back to January 17th, and indeed, I did see it myself because a couple of people uh, were pointing it out to me, but I was kind of sceptical whether this post seemed genuine. Now, to their credit, they did post some block diagrams of what is allegedly the GA103 and GA104 silicon. However, to be honest, I kind of expected it to either be a fake or just a kind of guess of what we'd, we could expect for the next generation. However, this is now backed up because someone posted the same thing, roughly anyway, on my drivers, but did not credit the Twitter post. So, this means that either, one, someone has taken the information from Kitty Gorky and posted it and not given credit, or B, there are two sources for this information. And given now that there are multiple reports that we will see some type of announcement at GTC 2020, and also that the GPUs are close to tape out, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that specifications are floating around onto the internets. There are a couple of other things, though, that do raise my eyebrow, but We'll be going into those as we go through the specs. I will start out, though, with the name of Ampere GA103. So, I'm kind of raising my eyebrow there, simply because it's unusual for NVIDIA to use, like, uneven numbers for higher-end GPUs. It's not to say it's impossible, and honestly, maybe they just planned so many different SKUs, it's the only way they could square the circle. But it... It kind of raises my eyebrow. It's not a big deal, though. Honestly, it could be called anything. It could be called Flower Cup, for all that matters. Um, it's just the internal name for the silicon, uh, the code name for the, uh, for the GPU die, excuse me. Anyway, so we can see that there are 60 SMs, and this is split into 3,840 CUDA cores. But if we look at the block diagram, we can see that it does have a PCI Express 4 host interface. But it doesn't look like it has a whole bunch of additional ray, uh, ray tracing cores. But it's possible that they're just not being uh, illustrated correctly here. And we also don't know what they've done to the RT cores. So I'm not going to call that as credible or uncredible based upon the, that specific uh, feature. However, looking at the specs then, 60 
uh, SMs, 3,840 CUDA, uh, CUDA cores, with a memory size of either 10 or 20 gigabytes, using GDDR6, of course, and this is on a 320-bit memory interface. That would also be unusual for a 80-class product. Um, it's not impossible, though. Uh, NVIDIA have used uh, bus widths like 320 before, like the uh, 8800 uh, GTS series was 320 bit. Uh, this was back in like 2007, 2008, something like that. So, you know, there is precedent for this. It would just be a little bit unusual, but maybe NVIDIA feel that the balance of additional memory bandwidth, size of memory, I don't think they'll put 20 gigabytes on board, honestly. I think 10 is much more likely. Uh, but going down the stack slightly, we have the RTX 3070. This is a 256-bit memory bus, once again a GDDR6 with uh, 8 or 16 gigabytes. And the number of CUDA cores has been cut, so we are now down to 3072 CUDA cores or 48 SMs. And this is, uh, once again, the GA104 silicon. So you can look at it, but the uh, RTX 3070 has an identical number of CUDA cores to the RTX 2080. The problem is, though, with that type of math is that it doesn't give you any indicator of performance, because as I recently demonstrated in my RX 480 against the RTX, uh, sorry, the RX 5700, even at the same clock frequency, the 5700 absolutely destroys it. This was in an effort to demonstrate how the next generation consoles are going to evolve because of new architectures, but still, my point remains the same here. For one, we don't know what the difference is with the RTX 30 silicon. So, for example, we don't know what efficiency improvements it's going to have, how ray tracing performance is going to evolve, which, by the way, has been the one consistent thing that RTX 30 would see a drastic uplift in ray tracing performance. So, for example, if NVIDIA were to crank the clock frequency up to 3, 400 megahertz, and we don't know what's possible with the 7nm process with TSMC in relation to their specific architecture, that would mean, with an improved uh, and a more efficient architecture, and of course much higher clock frequency, more bandwidth, that the RTX 3070 would drastically outperform the RTX 2080, although, once again, most of this is speculation because we are kind of dealing with a lot of guesses based upon the fact we don't know what enhancements the 30 series has over the 20 series. What's my personal opinion? Do I believe that this stuff is genuine? Well, it's not impossible given that it's not that far into the future that we can expect these to launch. Um... And given the fact that NVIDIA probably have an idea internally at this point of what they're targeting. Given multiple reports at this point seem to indicate that we're going to be looking at the latest like a Q3 launch for these cards. I don't think it's impossible for specifications to start floating around the internet. So I think it's kind of 50-50. Um, the problem is, as I said, we just don't know how it compares against the Turing architecture. And I'd really like to see what efficiency improvements there are. And I don't just mean in terms of power consumption, of course. I mean what type of improvements we see in the architecture overall to improve performance. Another possibility does exist regarding these specifications. And that could be traced back to May of last year. Where Capetti 7 Kimi, I'm really hoping I'm not butchering that... Uh, actually posted a whole bunch of specifications. He said maybe Ampere Compute Series. You can read it on uh, screen yourself. But he also states now, this was a tweet that was a couple of days ago, that Ampere does not use Samsung and there is no GA101. And if you look at the specifications, um, you can see, of course, that, for example, GA103 seems to have 320-bit uh, memory bus. So that does seem to line up. Now, this individual is not someone who has a poor track record. They did leak the fact that the RTX uh, 20 series would have super cards and also leaked some additional details as well. So it is entirely possible that all of this information does stem from these tweets. 
But, as always with the rumour mill, it's very difficult to be certain. And now, a couple of last stories. These are going to be quickers. The first of which is that Naughty Dog are hiring programmers which have experience with DirectX 12, Vulkan, as well as NVIDIA graphics cards, and this is allegedly for The Last of Us. Now, what's interesting about this is this is not some fan fiction. There is actually a job posting that is on the internet from Naughty Dog's own website, and you can read the responsibilities yourself. I'm going to go through a couple of the... Uh, pertinent ones here. Thorough understanding of current GPU architectures, AMD GCN, NVIDIA CUDA, experience with DirectX 12, Vulkan, or other, uh, other excuse me, modern graphics or compute APIs, experience with HLSL and GLSL, or other equivalent shader languages, console or PC programming experience, and a passion for, pro for playing and developing exceptional games. So that's it then, right? The Last of Us 2 is being released on PC. It must be. Well, actually, kind of no. Um, if you take some of this job advert and just run it into Google. So, for example, if you type Naughty Dog and then you type in CUDA or uh, DirectX 12, Vulkan and other modern graphics and compute APIs, you can actually see various other variants of this same advert and indeed one of them dates back now two years to january 25th 2018 this one was on gamma sutra and you can see that the advert is almost identical and why is this it's just simply because a lot of the uh, programming languages a lot of the skills are transferable so if you've never programmed something for the playstation 5 which is entirely possible it doesn't mean that they don't want you they will probably want you quite a bit. It's just that it's going to take you a bit of time to get used to the PlayStation shading language. And a lot of the PlayStation shading language is very similar to DirectX. And yes, I am simplifying things here. But still, the point is that they're not going to just turn you down. So having experience with AMD GCN or NVIDIA CUDA uh, GPUs just makes sense in the grand scheme of things. Does this mean that The Last of Us Part 2 is never going to come on PC? Well, maybe in the far-flung future. After all, we've seen uh, rumblings at the moment that certain PlayStation uh, 5 games, uh, sorry, PlayStation 4 games will come to the, to the PC, such as Horizon Zero Dawn, and also Eurogamer are reporting that we will see Dreams come to the PC as well. But I would not be expecting this Christmas to be playing uh, The Last of Us 2 on the PC. And now in the final, final, final piece of news for today, I'd like to discuss with you a potential leak for the PlayStation 5 UI. Uh, this was actually posted anonymously on the internet, as you would expect. I am working at some game studio that already has PS5 development kits. So I guess this is the first picture of the PS5 UI, as it looks right now, on the internet. A lot of the information has been blanked out for, well, ridiculously obvious reasons. But this does seem to indicate, if it's genuine of course, that we do have a one terabyte SSD on the system, at least on this development kit. It could potentially be 512 gigabytes or what have you on the retail system. And it also looks like the system software is still pretty early. It says 0.100.020. And it looks kind of like a slightly evolved version of the PlayStation 4 dash. So honestly, this could look entirely different uh, when the system does launch. However, I would like to thank Aya Wolfman on Twitter for thinking of me and tagging me in this particular leak. Anyway, with that all said, hopefully... You've enjoyed the video, and with any luck, I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.